In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the best games ever made for the Sega Mega CD. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. I love the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis and all the add-ons that came with it. The Master System Converter, the Sega 32X and of course the Mega CD. I have very fond memories of the Mega CD and one or two guilty pleasures. Ground Zero Texas for example. As I build out my collection I focused on what I believe to be the best titles for this CD add-on. And in this show I'm going to share with you the 5 best games ever made for it. Boiling down the Sega CD catalogue to just five games is going to be extremely hard. And so, I've got some honourable mentions to go through first. First up on our honourable mentions list is Soulstar. Soulstar is a stunning shoot 'em up for the Mega CD and really utilises the power of the add-on to move sprites around the screen. The game is often called Sega's Star Fox, but whilst thematically this could be the case, technically it's very different. The game made extensive use of Sega CD's ability to scale sprites and run its own version of Nintendo's Mode 7. In this way, it's closer to the speeder sections of the Super Star Wars games than it is Star Fox. The game is fast, with a huge amount of action happening around the player and has your standard on-rail shooter sections with you flying into the screen and free movement levels where you can move around the environment in whichever direction you like. The game is a joy to play and is bursting with colour and an epic CD quality orchestral inspired soundtrack. Road Avenger is a game by one of my favourite developers, Data East. The game is an interactive anime and uses quick time events as its core gameplay mechanic. It was an amazingly unique experience that Sega Mega CD owners got to play through. I remember sitting in front of the TV not quite believing that I was playing an awesome anime full of explosions, cars and bad guys. My friends would come over and we would marvel at this game. If something like this was possible, what else could the console be capable of? Luna the Silver Star is the second most successful game for Sega CD's add-on. The core game is a stunning RPG, but was nothing that could not be achieved on standard 16-bit hardware. Where the team really utilised the power of Sega CD was with its narrative storytelling elements. The game featured some amazing anime cutscenes throughout the game, with voice narration helping to establish the characters. The game also has a great soundtrack and, as we said earlier, is a stunning, stunning RPG game. Space Ace is a game that doesn't often get enough credit on the Mega CD. The game, originally an arcade title, is similar to Road Avenger in that it's an interactive animated video with QTEs as its core gameplay mechanic. The game has Hollywood and Disney quality animation with a quirky story and some brilliant characters. There's not much replayability to the game once you've finished it, but it's an experience that Sega CD owners got to enjoy while other console owners were still playing with conventional platformer games. Space Ace, defender of justice, truth, and the planet Earth. Ace is being attacked by the evil commander Borg. Hold your fire! Who is that creep? Borg. <laughs> no way, Borg, old buddy. Oh. Ah, I've been hit by the Infanto Ray. The Terminator had a number of outings on the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, with a crossover of Robocop versus Terminator easily being the best of the bunch. However, with the release of the Terminator on the Mega CD, Sega fans finally got a game worthy of the film franchise. Tons of Terminators to kill, very fast and reactive gun gameplay, one of the best soundtracks in a Mega CD game, and some great level design that follows the narrative of the film. 
The levels are also interspersed with footage from the film. Thunderhawk was a game I bought at launch day after spending months ogling over screenshots in magazines. While my friends were going on about a game where you could fly a spaceship piloted by a fox, I was eyeing up the gritty realism and full 3D freedom of Thunderhawk or AH3 Thunderstrike on the Sega CD. The game was out a month before Star Fox and for me was the superior game. The graphics were amazing, with a ton of scaling sprites describing the enemy and scenery. The gameplay was outstanding and really aged up the appeal of the game as you took your Thunderhawk on numerous sorties at night, in the desert, across the coastline and across forests. The gameplay was made even better with the sound design. The machine gun rounds were so satisfying, the explosions epic and the soundtrack brought everything together with its rock flavour. The Thunderhawk engine would later be used for Soulstar and Battlecorps. As I said, choosing five Mega CD games to be the best ever is hard and having this game at number four is probably the hardest choice. Sonic CD is my all-time favorite game in the franchise. There are better games in this series, but this one just resonated with me and still does to this day. There was so much depth to each of the levels and being able to travel to the past, present or future in each level blew my mind. If you choose to engage with this feature, then your goal is to destroy the enemy generator hidden in the level. Doing so will give you the good future when fighting Robotnik and keeping this up, destroying these generators will give you the good ending. The levels are also huge with a ton of different things to interact with and you have two new dash moves with a variant of the spin dash as well as a standing dash. The visuals in the game are stunning with so much detail and depth to them. I loved the themes and wasn't too offended by the special stage, although I preferred the Sonic 2 special stages. The intro and outro cartoons were amazing, and again, seeing a cartoon on my games console was so novel back then. By far though, the best thing about Sonic CD is Metal Sonic, one of the best enemies for a Sonic game. He pops up throughout the game, stealing Amy and making your life difficult. The final showdown race with him is epic and feels great when you're victorious. Sonic CD also has an amazing soundtrack and depending on if you're in North America or in Japan or PAL territories, then you would hear a completely different score. Final Fight CD is one of the greatest arcade ports of a game to a Sega games console ever. Super Nintendo owners got their hands on the game in 1991 and it was a good conversion to home consoles, but nothing compared to what Sega owners would get two years later. Final Fight CD was insanely close to the arcade version and even had enhancements over the original. The soundtrack got a CD overhaul and to this day still has the best tunes for the game that you'll hear. The intro also got voiceovers and was extended with new scenes and additional story. There's also an outro in the same vein. Just like the arcade, this is a two player game with a choice of three players. And from this point on, it's all pretty much the same. There are some small differences in the sprite work, colors and animation timings, but that's it. It retains all the great gameplay and arcade visuals that made this one of the best beat em ups ever. The Sega CD version got a time attack mode with new level art set on top of a city bridge at night, which just looks great. And of course, a ton of settings to mess about with. The quality of this port and the remastered audio track that accompanied it is why I think this game deserves to take the number three spot.
Silpede is one of the best shoot 'em ups for the Sega CD and is the best when it comes to impressive visuals, story, and audio design. The game sets the tone for what you can expect in the very first cutscene. A sci fi epic soundtrack plays out as you watch a pre rendered cutscene prep your space fighter, an SA 77 Silpede for combat. The presentation continues when you press the start button, setting the ambience for one of the best space battles ever to take place on the console. Once you've gorged on the opening cutscene, it's into the game, and the epic sci-fi feeling continues with the controller in hand. As you fight through waves of enemy, a huge battle rages in the background, with space carriers exploding into hundreds of polygons as pre-rendered visuals set up one of the most impressive galactic battles on the Mega CD. Your squad are also constantly on the comms, talking to you and reacting to the battle around you. Silpede's amazing presentation, solid gameplay and stunning soundtrack cement its place in second position. Snatch is, for me without doubt, the best game on the Mega CD. It's not heavy on action and it's a very different game from the others we've seen in this video. The game is a visual novel and has an investigation mechanic as well as a few light gun sections. What sets this apart from any other game is its cyberpunk universe and adult themes the game covers. It's fair to say that Snatcher is heavily influenced by the classic sci-fi film Blade Runner, drawing not just influence from the set designs, but also from the story itself. The game will hook you in with its well-written story and will keep you there with its twists and turns. The visuals are simply amazing. There are so many bespoke sets in this game, it's like having a full interactive film in your hands. The gun sections help break up the story, and if you have a Justifier light gun, you can use this instead of a joypad. This is a game you need to experience on the Sega CD. 50 years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis. The appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world. They appear during winter killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. So those are my five best ever games made for the Mega CD. 
Now make sure you drop down into the comments below. Let me know what your five are, if they differ from mine, or if you disagree with what I've put in that top five. Now, if you're new to the channel and you like what you've seen today, why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We make brand new retro gaming videos every single Monday, and so that you never miss one, you can also click on a little bell just below the video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.